So this lecture we look at the third of the three configurations that give a gain of the order of GMRO the whole squared and that is the two stage op amp. So it has a first stage which is a simple differential amplifier and the second stage is a common source stage. So the output of the first stage is connected to well if the input has NMOS uh, a differential pair as the drivers then the output of the first stage is connected to a PMOS uh, as a driver of the second stage. We will see why connecting the output to an NMOS is not a good idea right, by the end of this lecture. So the voltage gain of this is the voltage gain of the first stage multiplied by that of the second stage. So that is GM1 RO1 parallel RO3 divided by 2, the 2 coming because it's a differential uh, mode gain of a differential amplifier multiplied by the gain of the second stage which is GM6 into RO6 parallel RO7. Now one thing to note here is that if these were all bipolar transistors then the gain would simply not be the product of the two gains because the second stage will load the first stage because the input impedance of a bipolar transistor is not infinite. But because MOSFETs have infinite input impedances the, there is no loading and therefore the gain simply multiply. So this is GMRO uh, how much is it? GMRO by 4 times GMRO by 2. So GMRO squared by 8 this will become. All right. So slightly smaller than the gain of a folded cascode uh, but of the same order GMRO the whole squared. This configuration gives the largest output voltage swing in the open loop configuration uh, because above VO there is only one transistor, below VO there is only one transistor. So the VO can go to VDD minus 0.1 volts high and just 0.1 volts low if the overdrives are 0.1 and 0.1 volt. So as we did with the last two configurations, let us close the loop and look at the closed loop uh, voltage swing. So we connect the output to the negative input of the differential amplifier. In this case, M1 is the negative input. From here to here is positive, from here to here is negative. So VO goes to the gate of M1. We use the same numbers as we did in the last two cases. <coughs> Threshold voltage is of 0.4, overdrive of 0.1 for all transistors and therefore a VGS of 0.5 for all, for all transistors. So then VG5 is 0.5. VG5 is of course connected to M7 also, so VG7 is also 0.5. VG3 is 3 minus 0.5, so 2.5. And we assume that the gate of M6, which is a drain of M4, is also at 2.5. If you think about it, you may ask how we ensure that this voltage is uh, at a DC voltage of 2.5 volts because if you recall this is a high impedance node and the exact DC voltage at this node is unknown. It cannot be determined. We can only determine a range. For now we will assume that it is 2.5. The way it is achieved to be 2.5 is by what is called as common mode feedback which we will discuss by the end of this chapter. All right. So for now let us assume that it is 2.5. So with these numbers, let us find VO min and VO max. So VO min, the lowest voltage that can exist at the output will be determined by M7 and also by M1, M5. So as we just said, for M7, because the overdrive of M7 is 0.1, the lowest voltage that we can go to due to M7 is 0.1 volt. Due to M1, M5 and we saw this in both the previous configurations, the lowest voltage that can exist at the gate of M1 is the overdrive of M5 which is 0.1 plus the VGS of M1 which is 0.5. So 0.1 plus 0.5, so 0.6 volts. 
and the, taking the higher of the two v o min is 0 0.6 volts all right let us find v o max so with the same numbers i am repeating here just for reference v o max all is determined by m6 and by m1 going out of saturation so due to m6 again the overdrive of m6 is 0.1 so v o can go to 3 minus 0.1 so 2.9 volts what about m1 how what is the highest voltage that can exist at the gate of m1 while keeping m1 in saturation this is actually a non-trivial question we have discussed this briefly in lecture 22 slide 7 where we said that so what happens is as vg increases the drain of m1 decreases because there is an inversion from gate to drain so if you want to find the highest voltage that can exist at the gate of m1 we need to know how the drain of m1 changes as the gate of m1 changes therefore we need to know the voltage gain of the differential amplifier without it we cannot determine what is the highest voltage that can exist at the gate of m1 now interestingly so we will not do that actually well okay uh, we will not do that for the open loop interestingly once we close the loop as we have done for a unity gain configuration it turns out that this answer is much simpler to obtain but it requires some thinking so to start the thinking let us ask ourselves uh, okay let us uh, discuss the this following if there is no short circuit of there is if there is no unity gain feedback from the output to the gate of m1 if this is open loop then we know that this whole two stage op amp has a high gain all right so the first stage has some gain so from the input to the output of the first stage there is some high gain from the output of the input of the second stage to the output there is another high gain now if we close the loop then the overall voltage gain of this circuit from v into vo is one it's a unity gain feedback configuration so the voltage gain is one the question we want to ask is if the gain from v in to v out in this circuit is one what is the gain from v in to the output of the first stage or to vd2 here v in to vd2 all right that is a question we have to answer and this is an interesting question uh, so let us answer that by doing a very simple calculation so we'll represent the two stages by two amplifiers like this so we say well let this block diagram represent our two stage op amp this is the first stage it's a differential amplifier two inputs one output the output is connected to the input of the common source amplifier and this is the output the output is fed back to the negative input of the first stage so this is a unity gain configuration a1 is the gain of the differential amplifier i am putting minus a2 as the gain of the common source amplifier so that a2 is positive so a1 a2 both are positive numbers with this block diagrams let us write equations so we say vo1 is a1 into v in minus vo because this is vo vo is equal to minus a2 into vo1 vo is equal to minus a2 into vo1 vo1 from this first equation is a1 all that so we get minus a1 a2 v in minus vo so we solve this for vo so this is minus minus plus so we get vo equal to a1 a2 by 1 plus a1 a2 into v in this we are familiar with for a unity gain op amp the the output is a over 1 plus a into v in and if a is large then we get this is approximately equal to 1 so a is of course a1 times a2 now we ask how much is vo1 in this circuit so vo1 of course is vo divided by minus a2 from this we can come from here or we can come from here it doesn't matter so v minus vo by a2 vo is of course approximately equal to v in oh, i'm sorry this is v in should change this it's not one this is v in 
let's change it all right so this is v in and therefore v o 1 is equal to minus v o over a 2 and that is equal to minus v in over a 2 all right a 2 is large it must be around 50 60 100 like that therefore v o 1 is going to be very small and of course remember we are talking only about ac quantities here not the dc there is a dc voltage which is we have assumed to be 2.5 in fact at this node v o 1 the ac voltage is practically zero or close to zero because a 2 is large all right so we say v o 1 hardly changes in the unity gain feedback configuration all right that's an interesting property of a two-stage op amp that when we put it in the unity gate configuration the output of the first stage the ac output is hardly very small all right because it gets amplified by a2 in the second stage so this has to be small so we can say that this small signal v1 is practically zero and therefore the voltage at the snort v01 practically stays at 2.5 volts and we can use this now to find the highest voltage that can exist at the gate of m1 uh, in this unity gain configuration so if this is so if this is 2.5 so by symmetry we say this is 2.5 if this is 2.5 vg has to be less than 2.5 plus 5 is that a plus 0.4 i'm sorry the vt so 2.5 plus 0.4 so 2.9 volts so we are both due to m6 as well as m1 is 2.9 volts so we say vo max is 2.9 volts therefore we get the voltage swing of the two stage op amp under unity gain feedback as 0.6 volts to 2.9 volts which is good and which is the highest one can get from any op amp all right the folded cast code had 0 0.6 to 2.8 because there were two transistors above vo so this two stage op amp gives the highest possible voltage swing of any uh, gm ro square time type of configuration all right now what is happening is we've assumed vdt equal to 3 volts throughout this semester but uh, with shrinking technology vdd has been dropping it has been becoming smaller and smaller and a large number of circuits today with the small uh, dimension technologies have a vdd of 1.2 volts so vdd has reduced at the same time vt has not reduced by the same factor vdd went from 3 to 1.2 vt cannot reduce by the same factor because vt is required to be high to make sure that the noise margins are sufficiently large the noise margins of course apply to digital circuits but the vdd uh, vt stays the same for digital and analog circuits uh, of course it's not 0.4 it is probably about 0.3 or so 0.25 but nonetheless vt has not reduced by a significant amount so now let's say assume that we have this two stage op amp with a vdd of 1.2 volts then its voltage swing will be 0.6 will not change because this is 0.4 of the vt plus 2.1 volts the overdrives overdrives also cannot reduce due to process and temperature variation consideration so this stays at 0.6 this is vdd minus 0.1 so if VDD is 1.2, then this is 1.1. So the voltage swing for a 1.2 volt supply op amp is 0.6 to 1.1 volt out of 1.2. So that is less than 50%, which is very small and it can be limiting in a large number of applications. So of course, people realized this more than 40 years ago. Well, they started thinking about it because they knew that the VDD is dropping with shrinking technology and therefore at some point the swing will become too small a fraction of the overall VDD. So they started thinking about designing circuits that gave a higher voltage swing 
and now over the last 40 years many different configurations have been designed that give a swing of around 0.1 volt to 1.1 volt all right 0.1 volt on each side of the ground and vdd rails uh, so around in fact it can even go from 0 to 1.1 volt or vice versa so these amplifiers that where the swing goes nearly from ground to the vdd rails are called as rail to rail amplifiers where the word rail refers to the ground rail and the vdd rail in an integrated circuit uh, the vdd line the metal line of vdd and ground runs all the way all over the circuit and they are called rails so amplifiers that swing from the rail to rail are called rail to rail amplifiers if we have time we will look at the basic rail to rail configuration uh, by the end of this semester let us see we'll wait and watch okay the frequency response of the two stage amplifier we have kind of we are just putting together the frequency response of the differential amplifier and the common source amplifier the dominant pole of the two stage amplifier occurs at the output of the first stage due to the miller capacitance of the second stage and the second pole occurs at the output of the op amp so let me see if yeah so let's look at this circuit so the dominant pole occurs here because this node sees the miller capacitance of m6 which is large and so compared to the pole at the output this pole is at a much smaller frequency the second pole occurs at the output and for now i'm ignoring the poles at the input nodes assuming that the input resistance is small if it is not small of course there will be one more pole there will be three poles in the circuit but without the input pole the two stage op amp has two major poles as we had seen last time the folded cascode has three poles but whether the folded cascode is better or the two stage op amp is better from a frequency response consideration is a question we will reserve for next chapter after we discuss uh, com compensation and stability and all that so we will not discuss it right now okay the next thing we look at is so the way we have drawn this circuit the inputs are and mos transistors and thus the output is connected to the second stage input is a pmos transistor now one can of course imagine the reverse the differential amplifier can have pmos inputs and the common source stage can have an nmos input just the flipped version of this so the question is which one is better should we use this or should we use that the flipped version and there are two considerations that affect the decision about which one to use one is as we will, we will see subsequently the unity gain frequency of this op amp is approximately gm1 over c where gm1 is a gm of the input driver transistor and c is a capacitance we will see in the next chapter uh, now as electrons have a higher mobility than holes gm1 is larger for an nmos compared to a pmos if they are of the same size all right and if you want to use the same if you want to compare two uh, different configurations we want to use the same size so that, so that the capacitance is offered by the transistors are the same therefore for the same size transistors nmos has a higher gm due to a higher mobility and therefore nmos gives a higher unity gain frequency compared to pmos transistors on the other hand it turns out that pmos transistors generate less noise compared to nmos transistors and this has to do with the physics of what generates noise in transistors and we will not go into the physics of this but let us just accept that pmos transistors generate less noise now the noise generated by the driver transistor the first stage gets amplified by the second stage and therefore at the output of the op amp if we want a lesser noise then we would prefer the input transistors to be pmos transistors all right 
so if the application requires that the amplifier generate as less noise as possible then pmos inputs are used if the application requires the highest possible unity gain frequency then nmos transistors are used if both are important then typically nmos transistors are used as is the case with rf circuits where almost university so universally uh, the first low noise amplifier stage is always an nmos transistor although it's supposed to be low noise the speed consideration overrides the noise consideration all right now i had mentioned this at the beginning of this lecture so why do we connect the output of the first stage to the pmos uh, so here is a circuit where we connected the output of the first stage to the nmos of the second stage so the input of the second stage is nmos now why is this not a good idea you perhaps you can pause and think about from the just a dc biasing perspective why is this not a good idea all right so please pause and think the reason is the following if we assume our numbers as before so everything is uh, vgs is our 0.5 volts uh, for all transistors then we say that we want this m7 to have a gate dc gate voltage of 0.5 volts so that its overdrive is 0.1 and it gives a large gain which is of course what we want now what that means is that the this node vo1 has to have a dc voltage of 0.5 volts which is actually a very small voltage now let's think about it if this is dc 0.5 then to keep m2 in saturation the input dc voltage cannot be higher than 0 0.9 0 0.5 plus the vt which is 0.4 so the highest dc voltage will be 0 0.9 volts the lowest is how much we have seen that it is 0 0.6 volts so then the input common mode range of this circuit will be only 0 0.6 to 0 0.9 which is a very small range and this is a reason that uh, in a two stage op amp the inputs of both stages are not of the same type if the first stage has nmos input the second stage has pmos or vice versa all right okay so in the next lecture we'll discuss the higher gain op amp so we've seen three configurations with a gain of gmro the whole squared next lecture we'll start looking at gains of gmro cubed okay